good afternoon children a very good afternoon to all of you today we are going to start an explanation of the chapter which we had started yesterday now welcome to know what is the name of the chapter just see here what is the name of the chapter the enchanted shirt we had started explanation yesterday. It's a wonderful poem written by John Hay. You all had enjoyed reciting the video, the poem also, isn't it so? And now today, I'm going to explain you all the second lot of six stanzas. You all know the poem is of 18 stanzas. So I'm dividing it six, six and six. We have done the first six yesterday. Today, we'll be doing the next six and the uh, last slot of six slide, six past answers will be done next day. Okay. Now a little about John Hay, who is the writer of the poem. The poet. Just see here. John Hay was born on 8th of October 1838 at Salem in the United States. He died on the 1st of July 1905 at New Hampshire, United States. He was married to Clara Stone. Clara Stone in the year 1874. He, he got his education from the Brown University and he had two daughters, Helen Hay Whitney and Alice Hay Vassford. Now you see, John Milton Hay, he was an American, you all know. His official career started in the government section. And it extended almost up to half a century. That means almost 50 years. Now he started his career as a private secretary to Abraham Lincoln. But the highest office which he, which he uh, held was uh, as a secretary under the United States of America under President William McKinley and Theodore Roosevelt. This is about our poet John Milton. Now coming down to the enchanted shirt, the poem which we have seen yesterday, what is the poem about? The enchanted shirt, it tells us about the fate of a king. A king who was irresponsible to his subjects. Now, this narrative poem, it also highlights the necessity of social mingling. Mixing up with people all around us. We should do that. We should move out in the society. We should not stay within the four borders of our house. Now, it's the tale of a king who feels sick. Who is sick and he feels sick. And a strange cure prescribed for treating him, they are beautifully conveyed in the verses. It's a strange treatment which was given to him. We are going to know that. Okay. You all have recited already. I hope you all enjoyed. Now today we are going to go for an explanation. Now this is the first two paragraphs, stanza, which we have done yesterday. But still, I'm going to recite once so that y'all can follow. Let's see here. The king was sick. His cheek was red. And his eye was clear and bright. He ate and drank with a kingly chest. And peacefully snored at night. But he said he was sick. And the king should know. And doctors came by the score. They did not cure him. He cut off their heads and sent to the schools for more. These are the hard words which we have done yesterday. Now you all are going to recite the poem as many times you all can so that the inner meanings come very, becomes very clear to you all. The more you all recite, you will see that your tone changes and you can get an explanation of it yourself. Now, here's the explanation which we had done yesterday. I hope you all remember. I'm not going through a line-wise explanation again. So, just I tell you all, there was a king once upon a time who always felt that he was 
thick. But he ate and drank very properly and even slept very peacefully at night. There was no problem with his appetite or his sleep, but he felt that he was sick. Now the doctor had proclaimed that the king was very healthy, as fit as a fiddle, but the king felt that he was sick. Actually, the king was idle. He did not feel himself doing anything for the to to total society, the total world. He felt himself useless. So that's what we find here in the first two stanzas. Now the next second two stanzas, just see here. At last two famous doctors came and one was as poor as a rat. He had passed his life in studious toil and never found time to grow fat. The other had never looked in a book. His patients gave him no trouble. If they recovered, they paid him well. If they died, their heirs paid double. So, these are the hard words. This is the poem I just recited. You all are going to recite it many times. Now, these are the hard words. You all can see. If you all find any problem with any of other words, please join my live class and ask me. I shall just clear it up for you all. Now, an explanation of this part. So there were doctors who checked their patients with their skill and knowledge. They told that the king was, wasn't sick and they were doctors who were bookish. And the second lot of doctors who were bookish, one came who was very poor and the another, another came who had never gone through a book. Now they said that the king is very sick. So the king, he made, he made the first lot of doctors, he hung the first lot of doctors so that they, uh, because they told that he was totally well. Okay. Now here's the third lot of two stances we have done yesterday. Together they looked at the royal tongue as the king on his couch reclined. In succession, they thumped his august chest, but no trace of disease could find. The old sage said, you are as sound as a nut. Hang him up, roared the king in a game. In a ten-knot gale of royal rage, the other leech grew a shed pain. Now here, this part I have explained very properly yesterday. What is this? The last line, the other lead. What happened? What did the doctor say? How did they treat him? We have got questions from there also yesterday. So just see, here's the explanation of the third slot which we had done yesterday. Now the second lot of doctor who were very famous, they began to examine. How did they examine him? They hit on his chest. Okay, with their fist. But no disease was to be found. Now here, the king becomes superstitious too. He called for an old sage. But the sage too told him that he was totally fit. So the sage was also shouted at. The king got furious. And the, the, the sage, he turned out to be a lead. Looking at the royal rage, the sage turned out to be a leech. What is a leech? A backboneless parasite with soft muscles. So he became backboneless where his strength had gone away. And his muscles also began to grow weak. Looking at the rage of the king. Okay children, so this part we have done yesterday. This is the recapitulation what we had done. Please go through it once. And we had also done our class work which was who was sick. Was he really sick? The doctors who couldn't cure him were done what? What is a leech? And our homework also we have written down 10 hard words from within. Meanings. And what did the two doctors do to check the king? And what did the sage say? 
this was the work which was done yesterday. Now I'll come up to the next part here. Okay. So just see here. When I recite, you all are going to recite with me since you all are not attending my live classes. Please. But he pensively rubbed his sagacious nose and thus his prescription ran. The king will be well if he sleeps one night in the shirt of a happy man. Wide over the rim the courtiers rode as fast their horses ran. And many they saw and to many they spoke. But they found no happy man. They found poor men who would fain be rich and rich who thought they were poor. And men who twisted their waist and stays and women that short hose wore. So I recite once more for y'all. But he pensively rubbed his sagacious nose. And thus his prescription ran. The king will be well if he slips one night in the shirt of a happy man. Wide over the rim the courtiers rode and fast their horses ran. And many they saw and to many they spoke. But they found no happy man. They found poor men. Who would fain be rich and rich who thought they were poor and men who twisted their vests and stays and women that short hose wore. So what are the hard words here? Pensively means thoughtful. Sagacious means wise and possessing good judgment power. What is rem? Rem means a kingdom, a part. Fain means glad. Okay. Stays means a support, a house. Stays. And a short hose. Short hose means stockings. It's the spelling bead. I've got to correct it for y'all and I'll send it to y'all once more. It's short hose. Short hose means stockings. Okay. Now just see. Now one of the two famous doctors very thoughtfully rubbed his wife and possessing nose and then wrote his prescription. He said that if the king sleeps one night in the shirt of a happy man, then he will be totally cured. The king was so ignorant that he believed what the second doctor had said. Now the courtiers began to ride in their horses far and wide. They went as far as they could in order to find a happy man. But that was not a very easy task. They found men who were poor, who said that they were not happy since they were not rich. They even found rich men who were not happy since they were not the richest, they say. There were men who slept for the whole day at home taking no responsibilities of the society. But even then said they were not happy. There were women too who turned out of their houses in fancy stockings looking beautiful. Yet then said that they were not happy. So this was the condition when they moved out in the society. Now the next three paragraphs. They saw the two men by the roadside sit and both bemoaned their lot. For one had buried his wife, he said. The other one had not. At last they came to a village gate. A beggar lay whistling there. He whistled and sang and laughed and rolled on the grass in the soft tune air. The weary courtiers paused and looked at the scamp so blithe and gay. And one of them said, Heaven save you, friend, 
You seem to be happy today. Once more for y'all. They saw two men by the roadside sit and both bemoaned their lot. For one had buried his wife, he said, and the other one had not. At last they came to a village gate. A beggar lay whistling there. He whistled and sang and laughed and rolled on the grass in the soft June air. The weary courtiers paused and looked at the scamp so blithely. And one of them said, Heaven save you, friend. You seem to be happy today. Now what are the hard words we find? Bemoaned. Bemoaned means complained. Soft June means the pleasant June. Scamp means a mischievous person. Lit means careless. And gay means happy. Very happy. So, what do we find here? Now in the next instance, the courtiers found two men. Both were sad. One said that he had lost his wife and he had buried her. So he was sad. The other said that though he had lost his wife, he could not find a way out to bury her. Maybe he was very poor. And thus he too was sad. Now at last they came to the gate which led to a village. A beggar was sitting there whistling and singing and laughing and rolling continuously on the soft grass in front. The courtiers looked at him for a while and saw that he was so happy and careless of life. And they decided that this was the happy man they were looking for. So that's the thing which we find in these two, three stanzas, okay? Now for a recapitulation, what did we read today? The Enchanted Shirt is an English poem by John Hay. We have read in the poem Enchanted Shirt, no person is the happiest. One of the two doctors say that if the king sleeps one night in happy man's shirt, then he would get well. The guards found a man at the city gate who was happy, but they didn't take his shirt. Why? Because the beggar never wore a shirt. He had none. We, have, we will be seeing the rest part next. Okay, children. Now coming for your classwork. You see here, some questions are there which you all are going to answer yourself since you all are not attending my live classes. Those who attend my live classes, they answer me. So, you all are going to answer yourself. Whose shirt had been prescribed by the doctor for the king to turn well? Why were the poor men not happy? Why were the rich men not happy? What did the fashionable ladies wear? What was the beggar doing? So, these are the questions you all are going to answer to yourself. You'll, find, you'll enjoy it. And just see here your homework assignment. Answer the following in your own words. Following my video here. What advice did the second doctor give to the king? What kind of men did the courtiers find? The answers are very easy. If you follow my video here, you can answer it very well. Okay then children. Thank you.